Another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. It is week 44, 2019. I'm glad that you're along with us. Hey, we're out doing some sorting and some weighing and some shipping today, so no, uh, no announcements, but we'll get right into your questions. Normally I don't take interns, but I do two annual workshops, one's in the summer and one's in the fall. My next workshop is the annual one, which will be down in Torrey, Utah. I'll go ahead and put a link here. You can swipe over and see that. And the comedy portion of Tutorial Tuesday, nah, just kidding. Hey, um, you know what? It's really being around more incredible people than myself, um, like you, Ben. I use uh, two cotton carriers. One is the G3 double harness, and the other is a sling belt system. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like right there, where I can put my camera. I'm waiting for these guys to come down the you know, as far as best model to start with, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about as far as a person uh, being a model, but if you can give me a little bit more information, I'd appreciate it, and uh, I'm more than happy to answer your question. This question comes in via direct message, and if you can give me more info about the shoot that you have, uh, whether it's a high school senior or a ranch life shoot or something like that, I'm more than happy to give you some tips on uh, the shoot that you have coming up, so look forward to getting more info from you. I swear this is the best part of Tutorial Tuesday. Um, how do I keep the snot from freezing on my beard? I come back in the nice warm studio where I don't have to worry about a negative wind chill. That's how I do it. Okay, and this is a follow-up. This is more information that I had requested from that question about uh, having your first photo shoot and besides the technical things, what else should you be aware of? Uh, a few things come to mind. First and foremost, on the technical side of things, I would encourage you to uh, make sure that you can achieve focus where you want focus and not let your camera decide what it's going to focus on. Um, be very deliberate about what you're shooting and the story that you're telling. And when you do that, try to, try to layer the images in multiple pieces. So if you're, if you're photographing a hat, Maybe it would be great photograph next to a steamer with a hand um, working the brim or something like that. Those are a couple things that come to mind, especially when I'm out on location and I'm looking for the storytelling in an image versus just taking a picture of a hat. So build the story around uh, the person that you're working with. Yeah, absolutely. I have a Lightroom preset bundle that's packaged with a texture bundle as well and that sells for $30. If that's something that you would like, go ahead and DM me and I'll shoot you an invoice. Yeah, sure thing. So on our cameras, first and foremost, we usually get focus by using this button right here and we can hold it down, press it down halfway, get focus and then push it down completely and take the picture. But now there's also back button focusing and back button focusing is enabled right there with the AF on on a Canon. And what that does is it splits the dual functionality of what happens up here. So focusing is back here and you take a picture up there. Now in all fairness, I'm not a back button focusing kind of guy. That's not the way I shoot. I've always shot using that front focus uh, and then taking the picture from there. And you know, for those that back button focus, they swear by it. Like I said, for me, back button focusing isn't where it's at. Um, I use that front button. Now there's a couple different focusing methods as well, and that is predictive focus versus single shot focus. And let's talk about that. Now there are a couple different other focusing methods on, on Canon uh, that I use, and that is AI servo and also single shot. The difference between the two I'll talk about in the next 15 seconds. Now on Canons, there's a predictive focusing method called AI servo. I use that when, let's say, a cowboy or cowgirl is pushing cows down an alley and they're coming at me. Um, think bride coming down the aisle. That's when I would use it. Now the other focusing method that I use is single shot, and that is you set your focus point right there, you take the picture, and it's done. Think about somebody standing in front of your camera and not moving, but if that subject but if your subject starts moving, you might want to think about using uh, your camera's predictive focusing method. In Canon's case, that's the servo. Um, I found that it works really well for me. I don't use it exclusively, though. No, this is a great question, and this is exactly why I use cotton carriers, because 
when I am on horseback, my cameras do not shake around. I shake around, but my cameras don't shake around. Um, and it's the only system that I've found. The G3 cotton carrier dual camera harness system is the only system that I found where, you know, when I'm mobile or, you know, when I'm moving, my cameras are not moving. So I would highly recommend you get one. You know, I like the 6D and um, I've shot with it before. It's a nice camera, but if I were to choose between the two, I would go with my 5D Mark IV all day long. So if you want to save for that, do it. Now, out of fairness, I'm giving, my, I'm giving you my recommendation because the 5D Mark IV and III are my workhorses all the time. It wouldn't make any sense for me to go to the 6D II when I have that in the IV. As we finish up this week of Tutorial Tuesday, I just want to thank you all for tuning in and thank you for your questions. Um, and I want to remind you to also shoot from your heart because when we do that, we make authentic images. There's no right or wrong in photography. We learn the ropes and we learn, you know, not the rules, but the guidelines, the, you know, the technical aspects of photography. Uh, but there's no rule out there that says you have to make an image like somebody else or you have to bring a slider over to one side of the histogram or not. It's all up to you and it's about the image that you create from your heart. So know when you're out shooting to shoot from your heart. Know when you're sitting in the editing process to just edit from your heart. Make sure it looks good to you. That's all that has to happen is it just has to look good to you. So thank you for tuning in and always shoot from your heart.